talk about today is um, models, dynamics, and analysis of sustainable community development. Now, um, let's just go to, let me give you an overview to start out with. What we're going to do, we're going to take a community and we're going to model it. So you remember how back in the beginning class we, we modeled an individual, find out the life of an individual. We're going to go way beyond that now. We're going to take an individual, we're going to model their financial life, then we're going to model their, um, in the simple ways, their health, their education, and then the use of a shared resource. Then we're going to turn up the number of members in the community to 100, okay? And we're going to simulate community dynamics. Then we're going to develop a measure of goodness of how this community is doing. It's related to the IHDI, the Inequality Adjusted Human Development Index, and we're going to call it the Sustainable Community Development Index. That's going to measure the performance of the community, how good it's doing, okay, with respect to those variables. Money, health, education, and resource use. And then what we're going to do is we're going to embed a model of technology. We're going to adjust the technologies and see the impact on development of technology. This will remind you of some of the work we did with diffusion of technology and its impact on making money. Okay, I'm going to use that piece, piece of the model, in fact. Okay, so that's, that's uh, what we're up to today. So this is a very much a synthesis lecture on many ideas um, from the earlier pieces of analysis we've done and some of the other ideas from class. First idea, I call this Engineers Without Blinders. Um, the, there is an EWB, I know. It's a, a popular term uh, internationally. Um, what I mean here is, is that you, we have to always do technology development with the social context in mind. I'm so much reminded of many of my friends um, at, when they do engineering, they're just like, what should the resistor value be? What should the capacitor value be? And that's all they're thinking about. And you really have to take your blinders off and look at how it's going to impact people and so forth. Okay? Next thing, you have to start out with this uh, trying to model a community um, and simulate a community with a bit of trepidation. Um, it's like, what a hard problem. Okay? I mean, so imagine this. How could I create a computer model of you? Think about it. That's really hard. So what do you do? You, you, you pull off a trick, and that is, is you only assume certain state variables, okay? Like money, health, and education. You don't model every aspect, okay? But nonetheless, um, to my knowledge, there's no good model of a community that exists, period. I can't find one. My PhD students can't find one. So we, we made progress. I got help from my PhD students in creating this model. Um, and, it, and the general velocity goes like this. So just like in, in engineering, when we create a model for a circuit, a mechanism, a bridge, a dam, whatever it is, we do science. We go to areas like physics and chemistry and biology, blah, blah, blah. We use all that stuff all the time. It's prereq for you people, right? But here, we have to go to the social sciences. Now remember what the social sciences are. They're considered to be social work, uh, economics, political science, anthropology, and I can't think of another. There's probably another, I'm just forgetting. So the question is, is can you from the social sciences, get some basic principles about how to do modeling? And the answer is yes, you can. We're going to do some of that. We're going to go to, for instance, economics. Next thing you usually do in engineering, though, if you create a model, you often go to the physical experiment and you have to measure something. You have to get some data. And, and then you adjust the model based on physics, for instance, and you get a good model, and then you simulate, and everything's, you're happy with everything. The problem in this context is getting that kind of data really, really difficult, okay? And I've talked to some economists who said, forget it, it's the wrong approach. Why? Because if you model a human on certain contexts and you use data and then regression analysis to come up with a model, what will happen is move them in different contexts, they change their mood, then whatever happens, and the model is completely invalid. So there's a whole branch of people say that's an absurd approach. In other words, the idea of using data to model people, some people think is just absurd, okay? So this is a controversial issue too, I recognize that. So um, we're, we're left with a challenge though because when you get into development literature, um, there's many people that say, 
dynamics matter. And what they're often talking about is community dynamics. Um, think back to Homan, a social worker, talking about the systems theory view of community and go in the social systems view by uh, Smith and Dale from social work also. You, I mean, it's endless. Robert Gunga's book, a system theory emphasis in Robert Gunga's book on development. It, it's on and on and on. People say dynamics matter. Well, if, if we're gonna, I think one of the contributions we can make in humanitarian engineering is take that statement seriously. All right, if dynamics matter, well, what do we do when we're, if you're an engineer and you've got something that's dynamic, what do you do? Well, you create a model and you start trying to study it. So this is a bit in its infancy today. I certainly want to make that clear. However, I think what you're going to see by the end is, is we're going to gain some insights from this model. This isn't going to be a waste of time. Okay, so first thing you have to understand about models is, is they're never perfect, period. There's no such thing as a perfect model. End of story. I don't, we can argue about this, whatever. Circuit models are always inaccurate. They're typically based on linearity assumptions. Statics and dynamics, those are all just models that leave all, all kinds of stuff. Everybody, you can't create a perfect model. Why? Because a model is, well, it's, a, it's one of, typically one of two things. It's, it's a piece of math, right? And the math is different than the thing you're trying to represent, period. Obviously, it's not accurate, okay? Second of all, if it's a computer program, which often is based on the mathematics, uh, but not always, um, there's the same problem. What's inside a computer is not what's outside the computer. Right? So they're different things. So you can't create a perfect model. The question is, is when is a model good enough? And usually the best criterion for that is, is what are you going to use the model for? Okay? So what you want something is, is, is you want the model to serve a purpose and not beyond that. You can't stretch the model, okay, too far. Um, it's a pretty well known idea in science um, and engineering too. You just you can't stretch it too far. So what I'm going to try to do here, I'm going to do a delicate balance. I'm going to try to create a model, no data validated from any community in existence in the universe. And what I'm going to try to do is convince you that this, that for making some conclusions, this makes sense. You can't make too many conclusions, but you can make some conclusions. Okay, that's it. Um, so we're going to start with some qualitative ideas um, from models and economics, some of them we've already studied. Um, we're not going to fit data, but there's going to be a little trick we perform because the computer is really fast. So here's the thing I'm going to be able to do. I can take a community. I can randomly generate individuals that fit a model within parameters. So if, if for instance, the science says this is the form of a nonlinearity, but we don't know what this number is, but we know it's in this range. So my trick's simply gonna be, well, I'm gonna generate a thousand points in that range. Are any of them right? No, but one of them's gonna be pretty darn close. See what I'm saying? That's gonna be a trick I'll do, all right? So I'm gonna consider random individuals and then random communities. And then we're gonna compare development in terms of average averages and standard deviations of communities of random individuals. And suddenly you're going to start seeing, well, it kind of makes sense. This, it, it, it's probably, a, some of the conclusions we'll make will be based on general trends, but they'll give good ideas. Okay, now some math, and of course, you never, don't ever freak out when you see a bunch of math. Just, you pick it apart. Start on the left, go to the right. Okay, so on this map, well, I is person. Person I, I equal one to capital N. Okay, ignore the max thing, go right to here. Take this term out, this is WI. So my help at the next time instant is what it was at the last time instant. Well, then this term will just be minus, I'll keep this between zero and one, uh, very near one, or I'm sorry, very near zero. This is health degradation over time. Something you people don't have to understand because you're young, but when you're 54 like me, you start to understand that term matters a lot because your health is degrading. All kinds of weird stuff happens. Okay? So that's what this is. This is the health degradation term over time, independent of anything. It's just aging. Then I got this term. This is the so-called production function. This is just a fancy version of the production function we used in um, Chapter three, when we were doing development, this is the same P. This is the, remember this P? This P is the one that's proportional to the quality of technology. Zero up to some number, 
This together says how much money I'm going to make based on certain things. Here, it's going to depend on how much money or capital I have. You got money, you can make more money. Everybody knows that, right? You got health, you can make money. You don't have health, you can't make money, right? Typically. Education. It's well known that as you get more education, you can generally make more money if a job's available. And utilization. If I have resources, I can more resources, I can make more money off of those resources. Okay? So that's what this term will be. I'll talk about it in a little more detail in a moment. This will be our buddy here, the random income. This is going to be our guy in the simulation. It's going to be set to be a, a number uniformly di um, distributed on zero and two. So the average one dollar income, dollar a day. Okay? But see, this guy is doing better than the one we studied in chapter one on poverty, the poverty um, PID. Because this guy's making money this way, but he's also making money this way. So the income of the person is this right here. This is his, uh, his or her spending. That's W, spending from wealth. Now, all this detail here, uh, what I want to try to point out to you is it's a product. So here's the B from up there. This is FW, which is here, FH, which is here, FE, which is down here and F U, which is over there, down there. Now, first term from the field of economics. Um, you take wealth and you raise it to some number. That number typically in economics uh, lies between, uh, I forget, uh, 0.3 and 0.7, what's been found, using data and so forth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate random individuals with their parameter at range. That means they'll be, be uh, more or less productive using their own wealth. Some people will get wealth, have wealth and they won't be able to make much of it. And other people will have a little wealth and be able to make a lot of it. Okay? Next, health. All right, so just look at the form. Don't worry about all the details. What is this form? This is the same form we use for the poverty crop. You remember the shape of this? It's an S, right? This guy adjusts the steepness of the, the slope. This guy, uh, um, it, it also affects that and how it goes like this. So what it basically says is for typical values here and here, if h is equal to zero, it's one minus one, one minus one over one. Well, and then it's uh, zero, okay? So if my health's zero, I can't make any money, right? Makes sense, okay, because I'm dead. Um, but if my health goes up, after I get to, you know, after I can get out of bed, a little healthier, I can get out and run around, get a little healthier, I can make more and more money, okay? Uh, then there's, this term has been incredibly well studied, um, the education term, in relating um, education to earnings. This is the form uh, proposed back in the 50s by Mincer. This is the Mincer earning function, and uh, for various people and situations, these numbers will be different, but look at what the thing is. This is an exponential. It goes up like that, and it's a plus, a constant. So Mincer showed that your, your additional earnings due to more education goes up exponentially. Why you want to get a college education, okay? Next, uh, this is related to ecology. So, there's a, little, a few confusions here, but let me point out, I took this min right here, ignore that for a minute, and ignore the min and just consider R. So if R is here, all it says is, this is a line, AUI times R plus alpha UI. This is the slope, this is the intercept, okay? Now, why did I put this min term here? Well, the problem was, um, <coughs> I, I think it's reasonable to assume that there will always be some low level of resources available anywhere. I mean, I know that's questionable to some extent in, in a drought, a famine. Well, famines aren't happening much anymore because we have this, uh, well, we have more democracy, that's what's really the reason. Um, but uh, the, uh, the point is that I didn't feel it was reasonable to let this guy go to zero, okay? And uh, uh, probably of these three, we have some justification from literature for this choice, certainly for this choice and this choice. So these three are on relatively solid ground. This is the one that's a little questionable, I'm not sure of. I couldn't find something in the literature, so I just chose a linear function, OK? 
right? But if you think about it for a minute, these functions are all going up, right? We got a function here. This could be alpha could, here could be one, one half. Well, then this is a square root. What's the square root look like? It looks like that, right? Well, this one is the S shape. Well, this one goes like this. So they're all going up, but I thought, well, let's just leave it linear and just let it go up, okay? The best I could, you know, I thought it was a simple thing to try. Okay, next. Take a hunt. I'm gonna make random draws in the ranges of all those parameters on the previous slide. I don't need to say what they are, that's the details in the book. The point is, is this is the shape of the functions. These are the 100 people. So you can go in here and carefully figure out the yellow guy and trace them around. But the point is, is that everybody in the community is different. Their ability to earn money based on their health, or their wealth, their health, their education, and their resources available, they're all different. Now you notice I didn't make this too much different because that's a shared resource, okay? But these are very different. So this one, you know, uh, well, in each case, the explanation's, I guess, sort of clear, you know. Some people are more industrious, you can take their wealth and earn more money from it. And that's why you have variation in the upper left-hand corner. Tyler? Are the four variables independent of each other when they're randomly generated? Yeah, I did it. I did it completely independent. It's not clear that makes any sense. Uh, that's a good question. In other words, what you could say, you could make draws such that you draw the individual and it's somebody that would have, let's say, more ability to generate income in this sense, may be able to overcome a health problem easier with people that have more stamina or whatever. This brings up what's really frustrating about trying to model humans is, you know, we're kind of complex. Um, there's so many factors, right? Okay, so that's a community of 100 people in terms of their ability to um, earn income. Uh, next, let's talk about how people spend money. We'll keep it really simple. And related to what we did in chapter one, so you'll know this really fast. Okay? Let's say that wealth is above some minimum value. Remember when we were picking back to the PID, like 0.95, right? Or 0.9, we tried different numbers there. We said, they gotta spend at least, at least this much per day, they're gonna die. Okay, so think of that. So if they've got no money, then I, I make it like this. Let's just ignore the mins and the maxes for a minute and look at this term right here. This is desired wealth, this is actual wealth of the person. What's KP? Why am I calling it KP? It's a? It's a gain. Yes, it's a proportional gain. Remember PID, proportional gain. KP, that's traditional notation. Here, what's this guy? That's an integrator, that's a simple sum, right? It's a simple sum. So why didn't I call this KI? Because I had this I sitting up here. So I call him K int, okay? And I, I can tell you, when I, I did not tune these values. I just picked something and it worked. Because that's how beautiful PID is. Okay, so the rest of the min and the max, what it's doing is making sure that you're spending every time over the min, and you're spending no more than the max. And the max is this guy. You can't spend more than this because you don't have that money. You can't spend no more than what you have. That's all it's doing. Okay, so th this is easy. This is just a PI control, okay? just like in chapter one. Now, if the guy's got a really bad situation going on where wealth is less than min, in other words, he's got less than 95 cents in his pocket or something, well, what, and, and you have to decide what to spend, what does this do? Spends everything. That's all it does. Just spends everything. And it, the max is simply there to keep the spending positive. Okay, that's all it's there for. Don't let the math get in your way of understanding. The ideas are, it's unfortunate that the, to say it precisely makes a math mess when the ideas are really, really simple. Especially since I'm building on chapter one in the, the PID that we've used several times. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm imagining a person, and this, this everybody would manage their finances differently. So I'm thinking a little bit how people um, manage their funds. So they're gonna do a total amount of spending. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take three parameters, GS, GH, and GE, such that their sum's one, and then I'm going to spend on myself today this amount. On, I'm gonna put them in a bank, shove it under the mattress, bury it out back, whatever. Uh, this amount for health, and this amount for education. 
It's like it, the classic thing is somebody taking a cookie jar, right? A couple cookie jars and, and putting money in them every day and trying to build up a, that's what I'm thinking about, okay? So these are, I call them banks, but of course I'm not talking about Chase Manhattan. I'm talking about something more modest. But look what happens. If you took the sum of the right and the sum of the left, what do you get? If you take the sum of the left, you get SW, the total spending. I spend on myself, I spend on education, I spend on health, that's it. But the beauty is, is when I take this sum, I get the same thing. Because of the sum, because of these conditions, and this sum equal one, I will get that out. So I'm gonna just take what I'm gonna spend, I'm allocating it perfectly. That's just a simple mathematical way of having $10 in your hands and saying, I'm spending $5 for dinner today, I'm taking $3 and putting away for my health problem, I'm putting $2 I'm putting away for education. That's all. That's all it's doing. That's simple. Now the bottom, <coughs> I'm not going to describe all this, but I wanted to put here for precision. But what I want to point out is, is this. It, it's very simple. First of all, ignore the mins. This is the spending on health. So I'm going to put money in the bank, health bank, education bank. But i got to say how to pull it out, right? So what I'm going to do is have my person spend based on this, KH1 minus HR. Think about it for a minute. What is that? One, I didn't say already. I'm modeling health on a scale of 0 to 1. I'm modeling education on a scale of 0 to 1. Okay, for health, 1's perfect health, 0 is your dead. All right? Education, zero would, 0 would mean you know nothing. 1 would mean you have the highest degree. It might be relative to your area. Okay. So, what is this? What is this? Again, what is that term called? Everybody should just like under a proportional control. This is the desired. Everybody wants to be perfectly healthy. This is the actual. Take the difference, multiply it by a gain. The beauty of servo, that what's called servo. This guy is at some value, starts shrinking. This number is positive. That means I'll spend less and less on it as I get closer and closer to being at perfect health. Same concept holds for education. Look at the two equations. So the min is what? The min just simply makes sure that you don't spend more than you have in your bank for each case, okay? This guy's simply the integration. It just, it says that, that health bank, HB, um, is equal to how much I'm spending on health today, my, what I allocated to it, minus what I'm spending on health today, plus what I had in my bank, assuming nobody <laughs> stole anything from me, okay? So, there's no, no surprises. So the total wealth of a person now is distributed, it's different than in chapter one. So look, look at what it is. It's, it's the wealth from the above equation, but it's what, in, what is in the two banks. Now what is in the two banks? You know how reality works. You raid the cookie jar, right? You raid at, at times. In an emergency, the person could go to their, their health and education banks and take some money out. Right? Now, the thing is, is on the wealth, remember we had WD. And WD, I'm going to make it 25, remember from chapter one, and I'm going to try to keep $25 all the time as a reserve. Okay? And then I'm only, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force that, but then I'm also going to um, spend then on the health and education from what else, whatever else is there. Okay, so. Um, that WT was just total wealth. I'll be using that variable um, in a minute. Now, health, education, resource dynamics. Ignore the minimums and maxes. Here's health degradation dynamics. My health goes down. This could be a disease term. I can add a positive number here. That would mean my health would go down. Now, this term's of interest to us. This is how much I'm spending on health. We just discussed that. This is a parameter we're gonna mess with. This is a parameter that converts money into health, okay? So what is that parameter in our lives? It means I pay the doctor, I get health, okay? We're going to look at this as a technology parameter because if I get better and better technology, that number at lower and lower cost, that number can go down. And therefore, for 
for the same amount of spending, I'll get more of an increase in health. All right, so we'll be studying that in a minute. These are perfectly mirror each other. This one here converts spending on education to actually being educated. So this would be related, in terms of technology, this would be related to instructional technology, right? STEM education. Okay. Next, everybody okay with that's health and education dynamics? Next, we go to utilization dynamics. Now this is, you gotta, this is integrating a lot. Remember back in chapter one, we talked about tragedy of the commons, we resource dynamics and model. That's exactly what this is. The equation at the bottom is exactly the same equation, okay? So the utilization of each individual, this I had to make an assumption on, okay? I assume there's a linear relationship between spending and utilization. Now the reason I justify that is, is people in a developing world pollute a lot less than people in the rich world. I mean, there's certainly a relationship between, um, you know, let's say, you know, um, GNI or gross GDP per capita and the <laughs> amount of pollution, okay? There, there is a relationship there. I know it's more complicated than that, but I'm just going with that. Now, I'm going to relate this to technology too, because if you're into sustainable technology, um, trying to efficiently convert um, um, money um, in, uh, into how much you get out of resource, there's technologies for that, that's what beta U would represent. This term right here, like I said, it's a standard term for modeling tragedy of the commons, as we discussed before. You see the exponential with the AR. This alpha R, remember that's carrying capacity. So when you run this equation, the max of that equation is alpha R. Remember we did that. This term we had called capital U of K, remember? This now I just call, it's just the sum of UI case, okay? I do not put in a constraint here on uh, sum of UIs equal one. Okay, so in that sense, it's, it's more like what Alex has pointed out to me. And I don't remember, know if you remember the discussion in class, okay, back, uh, it's been a while ago now. So this is the growth of the resource. You can think of it as, oh, it's a pasture for a bunch of cows, the grass is growing, they're eating at a certain rate, um, you're putting cows in at a certain rate, and this is your utilization. This is a common resource, one such variable per community. So I've got... What do I have in terms of variables for each community? I've got N times um, three, wealth, health, education, plus one, which is this resource. You notice there's no, no um, superscripts of I on the resource variables. It's only with the number of users here, okay? And they're all, the sum means they're all using that resource at the same time, okay? Okay, so, um, how am I representing technologies? I've covered most of the slide already, just like we did earlier on in chapter uh, uh, three, uh, technologies to make money, that was P. And that's the way the economists represent that. It's P times F, so that's production function. Remember, uh, we've done simulations where we considered the shift between 30 and 40, from low to high technology, et cetera. We studied technology diffusion and changing P. Uh, technologies I mentioned above to improve health, beta H for education, beta E, and uh, for making efficient resource use, beta U, okay? Those variables, fortunately, I don't have to necessarily say what they are either. You might say, wait a minute, what's the real variable? I'm not gonna do that. Why? Because first off, this is a really simple way to represent a technology because in some of these cases, you're talking about things like a water filtration system. It has dynamics, it's complex. I'm not gonna get into all those details. You could do that yourself for your own application. I'm just representing their effectiveness overall via one number, okay? Um, and we'll study their effects. I don't need to know their numeric value either because what I'm gonna do is consider all reasonable numeric values and do plots based on those, okay? Okay, let's simulate a community. This is, this is 100 people, okay? 
with a low technology, P equals 10. Upper left hand corner is the wealth and desired wealth. So th these plots should look familiar from chapter one. You have a, the orange line there being WD, the desired wealth. These are the actual wells that come up and they regulate around 25, okay? Um, here's the spending on self. Actually, if you go back and look at those plots, you'll see similar characteristics, such as this tough spot up here in the middle where he's not doing a very good, not doing good spending. That's because he's trying to build up his wealth here, right? And then he spends here. Health, I induced two diseases for the entire community, okay? Here was uh, at k equal 400, a not so bad disease. Here's a tougher one at k equal 800. You see the reaction to the people. The people spend the money, spend the money to return their health back to where they wanted it to be. Here's their education going up. They're spending, you see they're spending the money, okay? And when they get fully educated, uh, it regulates it down and stops spending money on education. Okay, here's their resource use. It's going down a little bit. There's their total spending, which doesn't teach us too much over the top plot. And then I plot the banks. So there's the health bank and the education bank. Um, you can see that at the end of a thousand, um, whatever these are, steps, days, whatever, weeks, I only have about $100, about $20 in their, their education bank. Okay, and so this is one community. Now what I'd like you to do is Take a snapshot of that. I want to turn it up to peak equal 200. Okay. So here's what happened to 200. It regulated it up faster. You remember, it went up faster, right? They got more money because they had a better technology, so on their production function, PF was higher. Um, this is quite a bit higher. They're spending more on themselves because they have more money. Uh, they knock out the, the problem with the health and health spending. It's similar. But look at, remember that education variables were all coming up here. Now they're getting educated faster because they have more money to spend on it and they, have, they can stop spending on education here. Okay? Uh, the resource, however, goes down more. I got richer. I'm polluting more. I'm using more resources. So the community is, use, is driving this down. Um, that's one of the main points of sustainable development, right? Uh, total spending here doesn't teach us too much. There's the health bank and education bank. The numbers are quite a bit higher. Remember, there was a hundred number here on the last slide. Now it's going up to 500, depending on uh, the individual. So you see, all the individuals have different capabilities, so all the individual plots are different, right? But uh, you can see the range of possibilities is in general um, doing quite a bit better. So this is this is one way to do this: is you run. Uh, Simulations, um, you know, for two different parameter values or three or four, but you quickly get tired of that, right? Because why? Well, it's hard to keep. You, I can, you can remember the previous plot and this plot, right? But when you get up to three or four or five, at least me, this old man has a hard time remembering five plots of whatever number of variables at the same time. So you just don't do that. You use a computer to do something different for you. We'll do that in a little bit. Okay. That's called a Monte Carlo simulation. Okay, next, you have a question here. An important question is, is well, is this good? Are, are the people doing good as a community? Are they, how are they doing as a community for this technology versus the previous technology? Now, you can all look at it and, and say, well, this, you know, this looks okay. Is that better? How can you measure that? How can you know when Everything's looking better, perhaps, except for that guy right there. Because if you use higher technology, we use more resources, right? So who's to say what's good? So we need a, a, some kind of a metric, some measure or authority to say what's good. And that's what we're going to develop, OK? So to develop that, I'm going to use a number of variables. Um, this is just the average wealth of an individual over their lifetime, OK? Average wealth, the mean wealth of an individual over a lifetime, bar is a standard notation for use of, of a variable. It's a mean, okay? So this is a mean, obviously, just a standard mean. But there's a problem. We're going to have to 
do more means, okay? This is, gets a little confusing. So what I'm gonna have to do is, is you realize that if I take this mean, the problem is, is that there's that I right here. It means there's a hundred such means, right? That top number, there's a, if n is equal to 100, there are 100 of these numbers right here. 100 means. Everybody in the community has their own mean income. All of you people, if I took all of you people, and you each, told, you each sat there and computed your own mean, that would be your WT bar. But each person would compute their own, I'd, I'd end up with 50 of them, right? So I've got a whole mess of those. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the mean of that mean. Okay, that's WT bar bar. Okay? And this here, this sum, is this sum right here. This sum is this sum, except for I put this little m right here, go m1. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking the mean of the means. Okay? So that's the second one. Problem is, is when do I stop doing math? And I'm going to stop right now because if I take the mean for an individual, then this is the, what is this at the level one? This is the mean of n individuals. But here's the problem. I don't want to just consider that case. Because that's the mean of the n individuals in one community. I want to consider a bunch of communities. I'm going to call it nc communities. So I'm going to have to take the mean of the mean of the mean. OK? I know that's a pain, but that's. And then. I'm going to take the standard of each deviation of the mean of the mean. You see, the problem is, is that from the perspective, if I consider many communities around the world, I've got to take the mean for each of all those communities. OK? So that's what gives me the, the three means. Uh, I'll use triple bar. And then uh, the standard deviation of those numbers. Well, I'll just use a hat and two bars. Hat's a traditional type of notation. And I'll do the exactly the same thing for health and, uh, health and education. Not exactly the same thing for resource. The reason is, is that there's one less bar, and that's because there's only one resource for all N people in the community. OK? So uh, I know that gets a little confusing, but if you just think about it for a minute, how else would you do it? I mean, in terms of getting a measure of effect on community. OK. so. And then I'm going to go and use the, the uh, inequality adjusted human development index approach in order to compute a sustainability, um, sustainable excuse me, community development index. OK, so first, <coughs> in, this, in the um, inequality adjusted, the ICI, what they do is they take the natural, they, they ignore the square roots for a minute. Just ignore that all together, the square roots. Um, one way to sort of rank um, a community is to say, I'm going to take this variable, minus off the minute possible value it could be, divide by the max it could be, minus the minute it could be. What will that do? That simply scales it on 0 to 1, right? It's really a lot easier than the math shows. This number will always lie between 0 and 1, provided that this is the, the min is always below this number, the max is always above this number. You're just scaling it to another a, a range between 0 and 1. So in this way, I can look at one community rank between 0 and 1 at some value, and another community rank at some value that might be higher than that. Okay? Now, in the ICI, they don't do that. They take the natural logarithm, not the square root as you're seeing there. I take the natural logarithm here, 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 here. And this is from uh, Marcia Sen and Anon. Okay? They said that wealth, if you think about it for a minute, wealth, if you're making a dollar a day and you start making two dollars a day, that's huge impact on your development. Okay? But if I'm making $50,000 a year and I go to $50,001 a year, that's almost no impact, right? So you have to put that in the math. And their way to put the math is use a function that's concave like this. Natural logarithm would serve the purpose. Okay, why did I just use a natural logarithm like an ICI? Well, think about the natural log. What does it do? It comes down here, it goes through what number? Yeah, zero, it goes through one. 
So if your variable goes below zero, below one, you've got a problem. So I thought, oh come on, it's never well, it's never going to go below that. It won't be a problem. All these variables are not going to be a problem. And I had run a whole mess of simulations. Did it hit? It did it once. So I had to say, forget it, because it doesn't matter what you pick, actually, in a certain sense. So I picked square root. What does the square root do? It starts at zero and goes up like this, shaped like the logarithm, the natural log. So go with square root, okay? Everything then works fine. The other variables, same sort of thing, okay? Um, so I'm just, you, you, I want you to get the ideas. That's what matters. Don't get the math in the way. So the idea is, is this is a measure of um, wealth between zero and one for community. For health, zero to one. For education, zero to one. And for resource use, zero to one. Okay? For a community. Okay, so that's that's the measures. Um, next, there's uh, something used uh, called the Atkinson Inequality Index that measures interdimension variation. Uh, for a variable x, it has, you have x1 up to xn. It uses this formula. It looks nasty. It's very simple. The denominator is the mean. The numerator is actually something called the geometric mean. Okay? And this is a it turns out this is a measure of inequality in the sense of it's like a, it's like thinking think of it like variance if it's but different. And variance just says how if you got a bunch of data, it says how this these as a low variance, this has a high variance, right? Same thing here. You know, near equality, near inequality. So what happens is, is they're near equal, AX will be zero. If um, if all the XI are equal to zero, except for one, then AX will be one. So it's a measure of inequality like the Gini index, but it's different, okay? We talked about that in chapter one. Here's what it does, you take two variables and plot it. So I'm just gonna take two numbers. I wanna, I wanna measure how close, how, what, what is in my measure of inequality? So I'm just gonna take these two numbers. Run x1 over 0 to 10, x2 over 0 to 10, and then I'm simply gonna plot that function up there, which is the n equal 2 case, and you can see what it does. Basically, uh, there's a line going from this point up to that corner point, where what? It's zero because x1 is equal to x2. And then everything goes up until you're at points where they're completely unequal at the maximum distance, okay? So that's, that's the shape of the Atkinson um, inequality index. So if you do that, all you do is plug in the math. I mean, this is for wealth, math, it's an inequality index, okay? And you can do it for health, spending, resources. And then you do just like in the ICI, use this formula, okay? So what, take one term, one minus AW, is what? It's AW is between 0 and 1. 1 minus AW is, of course, between 0 and 1. So it will tend to be smaller number. We'll discount the size of this number. So when I have a certain ranking for a community, and that com ranking is, let's say, 0.5, but if this number here is 0.1, it discounts that community because it's an unequal community, right? And that, the same thing happens with health, education, and resources. Then I would also develop what I call SCDIS, SCDII. I'm just going to replace the wealth variable with the self-spending variable or uh, income variable. The income variable is what's used in the ACI. Okay. Okay. Um, if you care, if you take two variables and look at the, the product, this is the geometric mean of two variables. It looks like this. Um, I won't go into details, but basically what happens if one of the variables is zero, um, the index will be zero, but as, as they both are at their max values, it'll peak right up here, okay? Okay, um, now, I wanna mention something here though that I'm not doing, um, that you could do, I put it as a homework problem, but I don't assign it. Um, if you think about it a minute here, what I'm doing actually, I'm comparing for my SCDI, my, my development index, um, communities, okay? I am not discounting those communities per 
um, inequalities within the community. And that's a problem. Because I could have a community that has, you know, 50% rich people and a, a really <coughs> poor people, and their averages will look pretty good. That's the reason for using IDHDI. So not, I'm not getting into, I'm, I'm looking at the differentials between communities, the inequalities between communities, not at the individual level. But you can translate that up. It's not hard to do the math and bring, bring up that kind of thing, okay? So what we're gonna do is, is though, is spend uh, some time discussing the effects of technology failures and quality of technologies. I consider conveniently a technology failure be simply put the variable at zero. If P is zero, well, I can't, it means I can't earn based on that technology. And then I'm going to simply grab one of the technology variable, variable and move it, okay? And study its effects in Monte Carlo simulations. First one, here's P. Now let me review what we're doing here. P is on the horizontal in all cases. It's from zero up to 200. All right, so what I do is I take P for all the communities. Um, I'm gonna let it be zero. Now what does that mean? I'm gonna have 100 people in every community. I'm gonna have 50 communities. And for each P value, I'm gonna run, uh, I'm gonna have six P values. Uh, randomly generated communities. So I've got 100 times um, 50 um, times six cases. It's a lot, but it only takes like a half hour to run. Um, I get all these statistics, and I get all these means and all this stuff, and I, I just plot their means and standard deviation. That's all I do, okay? So all that math I already defined defines all this stuff. I use, I use this thing, I say means here. I don't say it's the mean of the mean and all that kind of stuff. The mean of the mean of the mean is actually what this top variable is. This is three means, and a standard deviation of two means, okay? I'm not gonna say all that, okay? I just, I explained it in the book. Now, let's have, let's, let's, let's start talking about various cases. This is wealth, this is total wealth. So as I improve technology, ah, beautiful, I get more money, I get more wealth. Not surprising, right? So let's go over here and look at um, education and health. Health is the blue, education is the red. Now, the, the blue stays right up there, and the reason is, is that they don't really, they're not really tough on the communities and getting them sick a lot, so it doesn't matter too much. But on education, it's interesting because as I got better technology and made more money, I was able to spend more on my education. Makes sense, right? Um, down here, these two variables are uh, the, the total spending and um, total income. They're close to each other. The only reason they're offset is because it's as due to the $25 difference between um, it, 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 how these W is set to 25. So you have a nice situation, you get more and more better and better technology, they get better and better income, they get better and better spending. Here's the problem though, it's not all, all good. Look at the average resource use. As technology goes up, I spend more of my resources, I use more of my resources, and I go, it goes down. So it makes it unclear what is better. Of course, with self-spending, it goes up as you would expect. So what's interesting is the, the bottom right plot. So I plot here these three different sustainable community indices based on wealth, self-spending, and income. They're all pretty um, similar, but um, what happens is, is, is you're not seeing, like these look like there's drastic improvements in everything, right? Increase the quality of the technology, everything's gonna be beautiful. Sustainable Community Index, Development Index doesn't say that. It says, yeah, it's gonna get better, right? It's a little bit. It sort of makes sense, right? Because what this guy's taking into account is the problems with use of resources, okay? So it's discounting how much development has really occurred. Now, if you ignore that variable, these babies would really go up, right? But that's taken into account. Okay, um, health technology. Well, with no health technology, people just got sick, and, but if you gave a little bit, it, it improved things fast. You see, all these variables go up except for this one. In other words, if my health technology improves, I start making more money, I, I improve my health, of course, I improve my education, 
I improve my total spending and income, I improve my personal spending, everything gets better, except for, of course, once you st start improving all your health, you start making money and spending money, your resources are gonna go down some, okay? But because of the importance of health and education, you see a significant jump in the, the, the development indices um, improving. So this shows you that health technology matters, right? And shows you some of the trade-offs, okay? Next one, education. So education technology, um, so it, it, it's on the horizontal axis again. Uh, as it, the education technology gets better, you make more money. You, of course, improve your education a lot, okay? Um, you uh, spend more and make more income here. Um, uh, of course, you use more resources, you get more personal spending, and you see a definite jump in your development indices um, from the education technology. What you cannot do is overinterpret things here. You cannot say, oh, look at the plus, look at the difference. Education technology matters more than production technology or health technology. You can't say that because I didn't validate this model of data. So the number, it's the relative, it's the shapes of things that matter, okay? rather than being able to compare this plot to the previous plot. You can't really do that. Okay, next. The, res the beta U parameter, the resource use efficiency parameter. This one you gotta invert your thinking slightly because if you think about it, beta U um, being low is a good thing. That's, it's inversely proportional to quality of technology. So beta U equals zero, things are good, and as beta U increases, um, things are bad corresponding to um, bad um, technology. In this case, um, what's, what's interesting for me here is, okay, so look at this. Beta U um, decreasing is good in all cases for all variables. Now, that wasn't the case in the previous three, right? And beta U big is bad for all, and there's, look at the shapes. It's a little decrease, 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 decrease. So not surprisingly, if you think about the math, the development indices, it all decreases. So this is interesting. For me, this is one of the most interesting plots, because it says that if you can improve, um, it's like sustainability matters, because if you can improve the technology for resource use, efficiency, it has a drastic effect. I mean, and the better and better you can do, the more you're gonna raise the development of the community. Why does it matter so much? Because it affects everybody in the community because they're sharing the resource, okay? So I think, I think that's really um, a nice sort of insight that the simulations um, um, provide. Okay. Um, any questions before I go on? Yeah. How do you think the effect of uh, like where, like you discussed the quality of technology. When you improve that quality of technology, you need to prove, like you need to put in more money to make it better, and then your spending uh, goes up rather than going down. True. Uh, but you don't have that in your model. No, I don't. The problem is with the model. Uh, what if you were to expand this model? I would expand along those directions. Um, with respect to money um, and things like that, you should have. You should really be modeling three things uh, or more, um, cash in hand, um, capital, physical, that would be what you're talking about, capital, other forms of wealth, and probably loans would be useful. So you gotta really blow up your model, four variables from three to, you know, one to four to start capturing many of these other things. In fact, there's a section in the book at the end talking about all these problems. Um, you know, really what you need to here in the model of a community is uh, you gotta model the economy in the community. That links everybody together, right? This gets, this can get really hard. Okay. Um, last slide, uh, this is a summary slide. Um, so computational humanitarianism, basically feedback control for helping. So let's start, this is a busy slide, but let me just pick it apart quickly. Um, this is people, natural environment. Um, this here is this computer, let's say, possible development. 
How many times have we studied this diagram in this class? Countless. This is what we started. The first time we did this was with that spending advisor, personal spending advisor with PID. And we went through all that stuff. Then it's one person, one computer, right? Uh, then we start talking, we talked about um, the uh, tragedy of the commons and the regulation of the tragedy of the commons. As many people, one computer. Um, the wealth distribution strategy could be many, many people, many, many computers, distributed. The democracy, same comment. The cooperative management of community technology, okay, well that could be a bunch of computers for different community technologies. And then this stuff. So what's happened, you see there's an emerging theme, there's this sort of feedback thing, and really what we're talking, the commonality here, from an abstract sense is, the automation of helping people. That's what it is. Now some people wouldn't like to hear that, they think of it, but that's what happens every day in our lives, right? There's IT systems that are, you're putting data in, they're helping you, they're giving you advice, you know, whether it's, oh, you need to pay your electric bill now, or you need to pay your sanitation bill, or, you know, your fees are due for university, etc. There's this big system that's operating around us, that's all I'm talking about. Now, there, this could be made more explicit and useful, perhaps. Um, but uh, if you're interested in taking a course on that, there'll be one running um, the year after next. It runs every other year. Okay? Any questions?